So Roxy, go ahead and share your screen for us. Our next presenter is Rocio Griggs, um, and her presentation will be evaluating the adrenal glands during simian varicella virus infection and rhesus macaques. Um, go ahead and take it away. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Rocio Griggs, and my project is actually evaluating adrenal glands during varicella virus infection. So the adrenal glands are endocrine organs that are uh, located above the kidneys that are involved in homeostasis by, um, uh, due to their role in hormone secretion. The adrenal cortex is also a part of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which is responsible for responding to physical and psychological stressors. Um, and the adrenal glands role in this is a secretion of a number of different hormones. Adrenal dysfunction has been shown to cause long-term disruption in individuals and can clinically present um, as adrenal fatigue, metabolic insufficiency, and uncontrolled hypertension. One stressor in particular that has been shown to cause long-term disruption and adrenal dysfunction are viral infections. One group of viruses in particular, the group of alpha herpes viruses, has been shown to cause this. So varicella zoster virus is a human neurotropic alpha herpes virus whose primary infection is known for its presentation as a rash, otherwise known as chickenpox. The virus then travels in the bloodstream and transaxonally to remain latent in sensory ganglia until it's reactivated at a later point in time as herpes zoster or shingles. BZV infection can cause multi-system disease, including adrenal gland dysfunction. So previous studies have shown that VZV DNA is present in 6% of adrenal glands during latency. And in the non-human primate equivalent of VZV, simian varicella virus or SVV, there's also been proof, proof of um, SVV DNA latent in, viral, uh, in adrenal glands. This is interesting because it evaluates latent viral infection of the adrenal glands. And our study aims to expand upon that by looking at primary productive viral infection of the different components of the adrenal glands. We hypothesize that varicella infection of the adrenal glands can cause adrenal dysfunction leading to clinical disease during productive infection. In order to evaluate that, we must first categorize the productive varicella infection in SVV in non-human primates and VZV in a human tissue culture model. So for the animal component of our study, we use adrenal glands from an immunosuppressed rhesus macaque that was infected with primary active SVV, shown here in A, and who was studied in 2007 and showed hemorrhage and necrosis in their adrenal glands. We used these same adrenal glands and compared them to an uninfected rhesus macaque to determine the morphological changes of the virus, the distribution of the viral antigens, and the route of entry of the virus into the adrenals. For the human component, we took VZV-infected primary human adrenal cortical cells to determine productive infection. Let's first take a look at the animal uh, results. So do SVV-infected adrenal glands have an altered morphology? What you can appreciate from this slide is a difference in between our healthy control adrenal gland that shows the adrenal medulla and adrenal cortex in good shape in comparison to our SVV-infected um, rhesus macaque, who has signs of hemorrhage in the medullary space extending all the way throughout the adrenal cortex. We also found incidences of cowdery A inclusion bodies, which are a characteristic hallmark of uh, alpha herpes virus infection. The next question that we had was, where is the virus SVV itself located in the adrenal gland, in the medulla or in the cortex? So we took tyrosine hydroxylase, which is a medullary enzyme, to delineate the adrenal medulla from the adrenal cortex. And we found that SVV um, antigen is present in the adrenal cortical cells of our infected uh, rhesus macaque, outlined here in black. This was our predominant finding. However, there was one instance where we did see SVV antigen present in the adrenal cortical medullary junction. So after looking at the location of the virus in the adrenal glands, we then wanted to look at the method of transport into the adrenal glands. The two ways that this is possible is via the bloodstream or via transport transaxonally. So here we stained um, SVV in red in our infected individual, along with beta-3 tubulin, which is a marker for large sensory neurons. And we did not find any co-localization or proximity of beta-3 tubulin 
and um, SVV indicating that the transaxonal transport of the virus into the adrenal glands was unlikely. So this SVV um, uh, virus, viral infection uh, has shed a lot of light on primary productive infection of varicella virus, but we still wanted to know how varicella zoster virus in humans affected uh, the adrenal glands in primary productive infection. So we turn back to the human uh, tissue cell culture model. Here we infected a, a human adrenal cortical cells, uh, or we grew and then infected human adrenal cortical cells. Here we can see a mock infected monolayer of human adrenal cortical cells, which when we infected with BZV demonstrated large plaque-like structures, which is a characteristic cytopathic effect of primary uh, productive uh, viral infection. To further characterize the infection, we stained for VZV glycoproteins here in red, showing that the virus did indeed infect the human adrenal cortical cells, counterstained with the nuclear DAPI stain in blue. So in summary, during productive primary infection, rhesus macaque adrenal glands do have morphological changes associated with the antigen, including CAUDA inclusions and hemorrhage, and SVV is located predominantly in the adrenal cortex, but is not associated with beta-3 tubulin in the slides that we analyzed. Uh, in the human um, component of the study, primary human adrenal cortical cells can be productively infected with VZV, as evidenced by the cytopathic effect and the expression of viral antigens indicative of the productive infection. In the future, we would want to take the SVV infected rhesus macaque um, tissue and determine if SVV is transported on smaller neurites. And then in both the SVV and VZV um, portions of the study, we would want to look at serum and supernatant levels of different uh, hormones in order to determine whether there are virus-induced changes in mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoid secretion to then um, evaluate the effects of acyclovir, uh, which is an antiviral on virus-induced changes in secretion. I want to take a moment to thank the entire Nagel Lab for all of their help and support in the project. To the, uh, I want to thank the Malingam Lab for their uh, providing the rhesus macaque tissue and for and the Modern Human Anatomy program. Thank you. Great work. Impressive talk, Rocio. So I'm going to, uh, please post your questions into the chat stream if you have any. So I don't see any questions popping up yet. Um, so where do you think you'll take this project next? Um, like I said, I would want to move forward with further evaluation of the SVV. So we did not completely rule out the transaxonal transport of the virus into the adrenal glands. We want to look at the smaller neurites since we looked at larger neurons. Um, and then also look at whether there was a possibility of um, the virus being transported via the bloodstream since the adrenal glands were from a severely immunocompromised uh, rhesus macaque. Okay, there is a question now, let's see. Uh, were you surprised that the medulla was not as heavily infected? Um, so we were and we weren't. So we had thought that there may be a preferential infection of the medulla due to the common uh, embryonic origin of the adrenal medulla and the sensory ganglia where varicella zoster virus has been shown to remain latent. Um, but as far as um, infections, we have seen in different studies that there was preferential infection of the adrenal cortex, specifically the reticular and fascicular layers over the, um, the third layer, which is the, the glomerulosa. So yes and no. Okay, excellent. I don't see any further questions. Well, great work. Uh, I think I'd like to thank all of our speakers this session. Uh, everyone did a great job, uh, particularly uh, overcoming, I'm sure, the, the challenges to their projects uh, during the, the, remote, the, the remote activities. So great work, everyone. And this concludes our 2020 session for the Capstone presentations. Thank you much, very, very much for joining us.